The Squint Gaming is not responsible for your game files. All mods in this tutorial have been tested and worked properly. It is strongly advised that you back up your game files in the event any mistakes are made during the modding process. It is also recommended that you watch my entire video prior to installing any mods. Please ensure your gaming system meets the requirements to handle mods to prevent game crashes or less than adequate gameplay experience. Thank you for watching. Three, two. Hello everybody and welcome back to another Squint Gaming video. Today we are going to be doing a tutorial, the first of many to come, on how to create an image overlay for your uh, 5M uh, patrols um, to create basically just a little added flair, uh, realism, whatever, to your roleplay. Um, and that is going to be, uh, as you saw on the uh, previous image, we're going to take a laptop uh, image and we're going to uh, basically turn it into, um, like I said, an overlay uh, so that you can have your CAD, if you use a CAD system, um, to kind of have that presented on your stream. With that, I'll show you how to basically manipulate the photo so that you can create a transparent background to remove the screen and then adding in your CAD behind it so that it looks like you're actually working on that laptop um, on your streams. Uh, and then we're going to add a little bit of just an added um, texture flair to it and we're just going to add a, a little sticker with a barcode on it. Uh, many of the uh, you know, different agency, company, you know, provided computers have some sort of a uh, barcode or sticker that you know labels it as property of whatever so we're going to add that to it uh, just to add a little bit extra flair to it um, so first we're going to go ahead and we're going to hop over to our google browser and what uh, we want to do is grab our images okay so first up we're going to grab uh, an image of a tough book you can use a laptop if that's what you prefer um, just search for uh, either Toughbook or laptop uh, transparent images. Um, the one that I used is going to be the one that you can see right over here, uh, this GTAC um, Toughbook. It's pretty similar to the Panasonic, um, just different brand. Uh, but I really liked this image, so I picked this one. Also, if you notice down here, the size, uh, 1920 by 1300, that gives us a better clear image to use to where we can shrink it down and um, you know or adjust size of it and we're not going to lose that that quality uh, if we got something that was smaller and trying to make it bigger we would end up getting very pixelated and we don't want that okay so um, if you want to use this one uh, you can type in uh, gtac toughbook transparent png in your search make sure you're under images and then if you click over on this one right here, 
the image will pop up over here and you'll notice that it does have a transparent background. Now, just to make a little note, um, there are some times where you search for a transparent image and you will have the appearance that the image is transparent. However, when you open up the image in, say, uh, Photoshop, which is what we are going to be using today uh, to manipulate our photos, um, you will get this as part of your background. So the image is not transparent. Um, it will have this as the actual background behind the image. Um, so I'll show you how to handle that. Um, one of the other images, our sticker that I'm going to be using, and, and you can choose your own as well. Um, but if you prefer to use the one that I used, um, we will have to do a, a little bit of a correction with that one, and we will get into that. So um, over here, I'm going to go to the next tab. I have my rectangular black transparent label. So this one um, is actually not transparent. I, for some reason, could not find the one that I used um, on my, uh, my own personal one that I created yesterday. Uh, you can, you know, search for whatever uh, type of, you know, backgrounds uh, that you want sticker wise. Um, it doesn't have to be anything super spectacular, literally just maybe something with a slight outline to it, um, just to kind of give it some definition, um, differentiate it from just being a, a white um, you know, rectangle. Uh, it actually kind of gives it that appearance of being a, an applied sticker. Um, there is one right here uh, that seems like it, uh, it could possibly work. The, the edges are a little pixelated. I would probably go against using something like that. Um, and honestly, if it comes down to it, you can't find something that you like, you can always go uh, into, if you have access to like PowerPoint um, or even paint, uh, you should be able to just go in and easily create a uh, rectangle, uh, whether you want it to be something like this where it's got the, the you know squared off edges um, or if you want it to be rounded. Uh, you know, similar to this or, you know, wider, you can easily create that in PowerPoint. Save the particular image specifically um, to a PNG, and then you can load that into Photoshop or, you know, your uh, image editing software. All right, and then the last thing we're going to do is we're going to go over and download a barcode. You have a lot of options with barcodes. Um, again, you want to make sure that you get something that is transparent because when you have images such as this, where it, this one is uh, transparent, it appears that it's transparent, I can see the checkerboard in the background. Um, however, if you get one that either has the issue, like I said earlier, where it appears to have the transparent background, but it actually does not, or it has a uh, white background, uh, trying to remove that white background is not easy because of all of the lines and with the numbers. A lot of times Photoshop has a hard time recognizing uh, what is a background and what is not. All right. Uh, the other option that you have is if you do have one that has a white background um, to it, I'm trying to see if I can find one that has a white background. So, all right, say you find this, okay? This one, you already have a white background. That's actually not an issue, uh, simply because you are going to be putting it onto the sticker anyways, which is a white background. You can shrink this down so that it fits with inside the sticker, and um, then you can just add your own text. Um, the one that I found that I used uh, was this one here. Uh, so this one uh, is a transparent background, even though it appears to be uh, white. This one specifically is a transparent background. Um, and so I was just able to apply this on top of the sticker and adjust the size of it as needed. Okay, so if you want to use that one, by all means, go right ahead, download it, uh, make sure all three of your image downloads are in a spot where you can access them. And we will get back over to our main screen and we're going to open up Photoshop. Now here in Photoshop, um, I already have my um, my clipboard uh, or my image 
backgrounds ready to go. I have all three of my images loaded uh, into you know each layer. So here you can see uh, the barcode that I was talking about. It is transparent uh, completely, which is really nice. But again, it doesn't have to be. Um, if it has the white background to it, uh, you would just need to maybe crop around the edges to where it's not uh, too too much to where it's going to end up causing you to have to shrink it a lot for it to fit inside the sticker. Uh, and then you can see our laptop also uh, is transparent and that was the uh, first uh, image that I showed you. Uh, again, if you don't want to use like a tough book and you want to use a regular laptop or if you simply want to have an image where it shows uh, you know, the keyboard and the mouse pad slightly where you know this angled down, that is totally fine as well. Uh, I will say though, you just want to make sure that it uh, has the appearance of the main screen itself um, fully flat, basically. Uh, you don't want it to be at an angle or anything like that, just because it, it would look weird. Um, so first off, what we're going to do is we're going to remove the background of the laptop, okay? So we have our uh, layer right here, we have that selected. And what we're gonna do is go up here and we're gonna grab what I already have is our uh, marquee tool, okay? Uh, I always refer to this as the dancing ants because they dance around the screen. Um, and we're gonna select that area right there, okay? So we'll go ahead and let that go. And then what we want to do is we want to go ahead and uh, select on this button right here. And this is going to, I'm sorry, this one right here, the invert selection. We don't want the mask tool, we want the invert selection. Um, so if you hover over the button to, to see the little tag will pop up saying invert selection. So what that will do is that will select everything outside of the screen here, okay? Because right now we have the screen selected. So we want to select invert selection and you'll notice you have the marquee tool or the dancing ants around the outside of the image uh, as well as here so it's going to basically it's selecting this whole area out here okay so what we want to do is we want to do a layer via copy and now if we turn off our layer one over here on the side panel we can see that hey now we have no screen Okay, that area right here is all transparent, which is exactly what we want, okay? So now that that is set, we're gonna leave that alone. We're gonna go ahead and hide that, and we're gonna come up to our sticker image, okay? So right here, you can see exactly what I was talking about, uh, how the sticker is on top of a checkerboard, which should appear to be transparent. However, it is not. We're gonna fix that right now, okay? So up here on your marquee tool, what you can do is you can either do this one of two ways. Uh, you can do the rectangle, all right, uh, and then just get the uh, edges close to the sticker as possible without really losing too much of that black outline. Uh, or we can do what's probably going to be a little bit easier and uh, take less time. We're going to hover over and we're going to right click and we're going to go with the elliptical marquee tool, okay? So now with the elliptical marquee tool, we're gonna create um, basically that ellipses, okay? Uh, and sometimes without, um, without uh, having a lot of knowledge of how to fully use the different tools within, um, within Photoshop, uh, it can be a little daunting <laughs> um, trying to get stuff to work properly. Uh, and actually, before we use the ellipses, uh, the elliptical tool, I do want to go back. Uh, I'm going to right click and I'm going to grab the marquee tool. Now, other options that we have, I do want to get into that real quick. So over on the side here, we have uh, our pen tool. So if we right click on our pen tool, now you would have to download the plugin for this uh, in order to use the um, proper tool for it. Um, and actually, I don't know why mine is not showing up. Because I do have it. That's weird. Okay. Um, so there, another tool that we have is the, uh, the mag. 
magnets. There is a magnet tool. If you go up to, uh, so we are on the eraser tool. And we're going to grab the magnetic lasso. Okay, so the magnetic lasso. And we're going to just click around the edge of the black line. And so I'm not having to click, but if you can see, it's it's basically like tethering itself to the inside edge and outside. So you have to be very careful. So what we want to do is I'm going to double click that and we're just going to deselect. I'm going to do this again. So I'm going to start right up here on top and I'm going to kind of hover above that line and I'm going to drag and I'm just going to keep it that far above because it's going to then select the outermost edge of that uh, or magnetize so to speak itself to the outermost edge um, of the uh, outline for the sticker okay sometimes you might see that it's going to grab something from outside the image like the background that's okay we can fine tune it after we're done for right now we just want to get a majority of this background that we don't want um, to get removed okay so what we're going to do after we get this taken care of here is we're going to pretty much do the same thing we did with the laptop, although we're not going to do the inverse selection uh, because um, we want to take this image and just create a new uh, layer with just the sticker itself. Um, we could do the inverse and then remove it although sometimes I have issues with that not wanting to work properly. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and right click and we're going to layer via copy. Oh, it says we can't do that, why can't we do that? All right, maybe layer via cut, no. Oh, yeah, okay, so one key point, and I forgot to mention this, and. Uh, this is, I'm glad I made this mistake because it uh, reminded me to bring it up. So over here on the side panel, you can see we have our sticker is not hidden. Everything, all the other layers are hidden, right? However, if you see right here, that layer two, the laptop that we created uh, from layer one, uh, is highlighted even though it's not displayed, okay? The issue is because we did the layer on here, it recognized us doing the layer. However, trying to create a layer from that, um, even though this is selected, I have this layer selected over here, and it's telling me that I don't have anything selected on uh, any object selected. That's because I do not have the laptop selected, I have the sticker selected. So now if we come up here and click on the sticker, now we can go over here, right click, and layer via copy. And I can take care of that. And now you notice we have a new clean sticker that is transparent. And we can go ahead and click on this layer right here, right click, delete layer. And I'm gonna do the same thing with the laptop because we no longer need that since we have our new layer, okay? All right, so, and then one other thing I wanna to mention too, because the sticker, <coughs> excuse me, is going to be going on to the laptop, <coughs> pardon me, um, because the sticker is going to go on top of the laptop, we need to make sure that it is above the laptop. So the laptop needs to be the bottom um, of all three layers, uh, and, and that's for anything you're working with, whatever you want to be on top needs to be on top in your layer manager, okay? And so with that being said, what we need to do now is select our barcode and we need to bring that above the layer two, or I'm sorry, layer three, which is the sticker. So now when we turn on the barcode, we can see it is on top of the sticker. Had I not moved it, it would be behind the sticker, okay? So now what we wanna do is we are going to go back up here and we're going to select our little crosshairs tool and then we're going to select this button right here and that says transform image it's exactly what we want so this allows us to resize our image um, how we need to okay now so for this sticker uh, and the barcode 
we want to get it to a, a good size to where it's not too small, not too big, um, but it gives it a good, um, just a, a good look to it. It looks, you know, realistic. Uh, and we also want to make sure that it is centered. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to select my layer three, which is the sticker. And I'm also going to go to the resize. Uh, but that also allows me to move it. So what I want to make sure is, as I have, it's in dead center of the crosshairs, the vertical pink line and the horizontal pink line, fuchsia, magenta, whatever color you want to call it, uh, the sticker is centered, okay? Now what we want to do is we're going to go back to our barcode, and if we feel that the barcode is in a good spot, we can leave it there, or we can adjust it to make sure that it is in the proper position okay and then we can still also resize it if we need to I feel like that's a pretty good size I like the position of it so I'm gonna just go ahead and hit commit and I'm gonna leave it there now next what we want to do is we want to go over to the side tab over here and we want to click on the T which is our text tool so it's automatically set up in horizontal if you were to right click you can see where it's horizontal vertical and you can change those automatically by default it's set to horizontal so we're good with that and then we're going to go ahead and we're going to click eh, about center on the image okay and it's going to come up with some you know text and so what the text that we want um, is actually going to be um, Kandara uh, which came up by default which is interesting um, but that's fine because that's what I used uh, for the one that I created uh, yesterday for my personal use so now what we want to do um, with that being highlighted, we're going to go in and we are going to, uh, I'm going to capitalize it, uh, all caps, uh, as most of the time, any type of, you know, company or agency barcode sticker, uh, equipment sticker is going to be in all caps. Uh, and I'm going to type property of Los Santos County. DPT. So obviously this is very big. Um, I don't need it to be. Um, I don't need that. Delete. Okay. All right. So we're gonna go back over here, and I'm just gonna move this. And obviously it's still very large. So I am gonna go ahead and reduce to uh, let's go down to let's see, 18 no nope, we'll go up let's see what 30 looks like okay so 30 doesn't look too bad I think that looks about about right um, now if you want to spell out department then you know you may want to downsize it um, if you want to change it to whatever agency you're using if your you know 5m server um, is more of a realistic using real world real cities like new york city or chicago miami la um, feel free to change it however you want it to uh, my role play server we play as uh, los santos um, los santos county los santos metro uh, so i use property of los santos uh, and because i am <clears throat> excuse me i'm in the fire department I have mine set up for the fire department side okay so now that that is done once you're happy with that if you're good with that we're gonna go ahead and leave that and we will grab click on the side our text our barcode and our layer 3 which is the sticker and I'm gonna right click on that and I'm gonna go to link layers so now that all those layers are linked I'm gonna come back over here and I am going to I'm going to resize and you'll notice that everything together because the layers are linked everything will resize together proportionately which is perfect exactly what we want all right and then the last thing we want to do is we're going to go ahead and bring up our laptop which in my case is layer two now if you are the type of person who needs to uh, have specific labels for anything that you have over here, 
Uh, easy enough, you can go ahead, click on that layer, right click on it, and uh, actually you don't even need to do that. You can just double click on the layer and you'll be able to rename it whatever you want to rename it as. So I can go ahead and just type in laptop. Okay, and then for my layer three, I'm going to say sticker. This layer here, I can just type barcode. Doesn't need to be anything long, lengthy, anything like that. And then that, I can just leave it as that, or I can change that to text. Okay, so I have all of my layers labeled. All of my layers are unhidden so that I can see all of them. And what I want to do is I want to grab the sticker and we're just going to move it. Now everything is connected together so we don't have to worry about having all three layers selected. And then again what I want to do, I already shrunk it down, but I want to shrink it down a little bit more because that's a really big honking sticker. Okay, so we're just going to tone that down a little bit and I'm going to make it about that size right there. Okay and I'm going to put it about the middle right here of the image of the laptop. So what I'm using as my guides are these two dots right here, more specifically this one, and then just centering it over that screw right there. So once you're good with the size, um, you can hit commit if you want to have it over here or over here, or if you want to make a smaller sticker and have it listed up here. Uh, possibilities are endless. Um, do with it what you please, make it how you want it basis of this video is just kind of show you how to uh, kind of get to this point to where you can do all that manipulate how you want to do it so I'm good with that right there I'm gonna go ahead and hit commit and now that I am done with that I am all set to go ahead and save my image now one thing I do recommend because I'm going to be exporting this image okay uh, and it's gonna export with everything together that is displayed. I recommend going first, go to file, go to save as, okay, and what you want to do is save a copy of your Photoshop um, workspace, okay, so everything here will be saved um, in this manner, so you can always come back in and you can readjust if you, uh, you know, want to change the barcode, if you want to change, you know, the, the the text on the sticker. You have the workspace ready to go. You open it up, you make some minor changes, and you resave your image, and then just resave your um, your workspace. Okay, so I am going to save this as uh, Toughbook Workspace, and it will save as a PSD, and I'll just save it right here into this folder. This is where my other stuff is at, and I'll hit save. And you, yeah, you want to make sure you uh, maximize your compatibility. Um, Adobe updates quite often um, and so you want to make sure that if you do end up with a updated version of Photoshop um, that your previous workspace will open without any issues uh, in your updated uh, Photoshop. Okay so now that we have the workspace saved we're going to go up to file and we're going to export and what we want to do is go to export as and once your export as window pops up which it popped up screen on mine. So right here we're going to go ahead and leave the width 1920 by 1300. It's a perfect size and you want to make sure that this should already be checked but you want to make sure that the transparency has a check mark next to it. Our format is going to be PNG and then we're just going to click export and then you'll be brought up with where you want to save it. So for me I am going to go to uh, where I have my uh, stuff for this specific tutorial and I'm going to save it as Toughbook. I can just save it right there and click Save. And now your image with the Toughbook, the sticker, the barcode, everything is saved. So I can go ahead and close out of Photoshop. And I mean, you can resave it if you want to. I already saved it. Um, so we're good there. Now, what uh, if you want to check your image, you can open up place where you saved it and
here we go. So now, because it's opened up in uh, the photo um, app on Windows, it kind of looks like there's a background. This is transparent, and we will get into that once we uh, get it into our Streamlabs and set it up for an overlay. Okay, you will see this is transparent. There is no background. Okay, and you'll be able to overlay this on top of your CAD. All right, so we'll go ahead and close out of this. And I am going to show you how we're gonna go ahead and do this. Okay, so what we wanna do is in, oops. Okay, so I apologize, you can see the, the whole mirrored effect here on my, on my Streamlabs. Um, so what we wanna do is we're gonna go ahead and we want to add a source, okay? And so that source, we want to add an image. We're gonna click add source, and we wanna add a new source, and we're gonna say tough book. You're gonna browse for your image location. And I'm going to select tough book. And done. And you can see right here, I have a tough book, and you can see it's transparent. Every aspect of this is transparent. Okay. So, what I want to do now is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to shrink this down. And for you, when you are uh, setting it up in your uh, in your 5M for your overlay, you'll probably want to have um, maybe your your server open if you're able to access it, uh, if it's not one that uh, you require permission to get into uh, on off patrol times. Uh, you'll just want to go in and have the uh, your image set up um, while you're looking at your stream so that you can see uh, where you would want to have it placed so it doesn't look like it's just floating in, uh, you know, in, in space. Um, so I apologize, it's a little hard to see with, with that. Um, but I want you to be able to see kind of where I'm going here uh, with everything. So I'm going to leave that there. And now for my roleplay server, we use um, Sonoran CAD. Uh, and I, I know there's probably other places that also use Sonoran CAD. Uh, if you don't use Sonoran CAD, use a different CAD. It, it doesn't. It doesn't matter. Um, but uh, we we use Sonoran, and we really like it. We've had some updates to it. Um, and so now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring my CAD up into um, wherever I'm going to have it. So I, I usually have mine off on my other screen. Uh, and then what I want to do is in order to capture just the CAD window itself, I can have it wherever I want it, and Streamlabs will capture just that. So I'm going to go to another, add another source, and I'm going to go to Window Capture. Okay, Window Capture will capture specifically the window uh, and my cursor and nothing else around it. Um, whereas if I did like a screen capture or display capture, it would capture everything and I, I don't um, fully maximize my CAD because I have multiple windows up uh, on my other screen, CAD just being one of those. So I'm gonna do a window capture, add source, and you can either just leave it window capture or you can label it. I'm going to put CAD. I'm going to add the source, and then for the window, I'm going to uh, select Sonoran CAD. And there we are, Sonoran CAD is in viewable space. Now, in order to get this to not cover, obviously we want to make the size smaller. So what we can do is we can put the size so it's right inside the laptop and even to give it a little bit more of that real feel so you can't really tell that it's on top of you can just take your tough book right here 
and you're going to move it above your CAD. And now your CAD is behind the tough book. And then you can also readjust the size a little bit better when it's behind it so that you can see everything you need to see and you can just make the adjustments. Okay, so for this, I'm going to just adjust it enough to where I don't have any space on the side and I still have everything pretty much in view that I would want my viewers uh, to see while I'm working on it. Okay, and then one thing you can also do is now that you have those both um, sized appropriately, you're going to want to select both of them and you're going to want to put them into a group and I would just say put them into a folder and we can just say tough book for that we'll know what it is and we can now adjust both of those together without having to individually select them and then we can also adjust the size as we need to okay so once you have your um, your game open, uh, you're in your server, you're maybe at a desk, uh, and you can sit it to where it looks like it's sitting on the desk, okay? And then when you are, you know, say you get called out for a call, you can just go ahead and shut it off, and it's not visible, and then you can turn it back on when you open it up at a different point uh, during the game. All right, and so now that we have all of that taken care of, um, that should be it. Uh, I'm trying to think. I don't think I have anything else I needed to show with that. Um, yeah, as long as you know, uh, you know, most people, you, you know how to manage uh, Streamlabs, uh, Streamlabs OBS. Uh, it, it, for OBS specific users, it would be the same thing, um, just working through your resources. Uh, and then, you know, once you find that specific spot as well, uh, you can go ahead and lock it so you can't bump it, you know, by some chance, uh, and it will stay there, okay? Um, so, uh, at this point, we are all set. So, I hope you all enjoyed the video. If you have any comments or questions, uh, please feel free to put them down in the comments. Uh, also, if there's anything that you feel that I could do better with my streams, uh, please, again, put those in the comments. This is a recorded video um, for my tutorials. They will be uh, pre-recorded and uploaded, um, but I do um, have a bunch of uh, tutorials that I will be putting out uh, here shortly, um, mostly related to uh, LSPDFR uh, and then I will be also doing some uh, tutorials with uh, Flight Simulator. So please, uh, if you are not already subscribed, hit that subscription button, hit the like if you like the video, and make sure you hit that notification bell to be notified for when I upload new videos and go live. So until then, I hope you all had a uh, you know, fun time watching the video and you learned something. And um, you know, hope this was uh, a useful tutorial for you because uh, that's what I want to create is useful tutorials and that helps people to be able to kind of, you know, bring out a thought um, that they had and bring it to, you know, into life, to, into fruition. So, um, again, I hope this video was helpful for you. And with that, have a great rest of your day. Peace and love to everybody. And we'll see you next time. Thanks for checking out the Squint Daily channel.